Look <laughs> after wide open if we do that. Uh, uh, a very important part of the evening is the TV Week Logie Hall of Fame. It's given to acknowledge long-standing contribution to the television industry and tonight I'm very honoured to be standing here and on behalf of all of us to be inducting into the Hall of Fame the late but very great Maury Fields. I don't think anybody could be any more loved in the industry than Maury Fields. He was so much a part of, of the television industry uh, and, and entertainment industry in general. He was loved. He had that underlying modesty that we all thought, oh yeah, wow. What a... he, he went about his craft in a very dignified manner. Uh, he was born on August 4th, 1926, uh, Morris Alphonse Fields, into a very musical family. He was uh, a drummer with uh, his mother's concert band when he was six years of age. And by the time he left the family band at 18, he could play piano, trombone, vibraphone, ukulele, which he used to love, and banjo. Uh, he joined up with a guy named Al Kinney, and they became Skit and Scat. And they worked blackface, actually, uh, around the traps. And then he joined Sawley's Review, and that was a very fortuitous move on Maury's part, because it was when he joined Sawley's that he met Val Gillet, who was to become, of course, his lovely wife, and in 1960, uh, they married. Shortly after that, Marty Fields arrived, and who was, of course, keeping the tradition going. But it's interesting to note that through Maury's career, when times were lean in the early days, he didn't sort of sit back and think, oh, all right, well, I'll wait till an acting job comes along or a, 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 a musical job comes along. He actually took some early jobs, which I find, found quite amazing. He was an apprentice in the shoe trade. He was a shearer's cook up north. He was a sheep crutcher. <laughs> what a suited Murray, I bet he got a few lines out of that. He made <laughs> firefighting equipment at War Moulds and he travelled to New Guinea as a hardware salesman. Uh, true. And when television came along, Murray was there and he was doing all sorts of shows, just to list a few. Sunny Side Up, In Melbourne Tonight, Bellbird, Bobby Dazzler, ironically playing uh, with uh, John, played John Farnham's father in uh, Bobby Dazzler, Homicide, Matlock, Division 4, Cop Shop, Skyways, A Town Like Alice, The De Niro Boys, and of course, The Flying Doctors. He was truly one of the greats. Uh, he, I think, as best sums up his acting side, is a quote from, from Gary Gray, who was his co-star, one of his co-stars in Bellbird. And Gary said that not since Chips Rafferty has Australia seen an actor who permeated virtually every performance with those very appealing traditional Australian characteristics of the laconic, the humorous, the dry and the larrikin. I don't know about the dry with Murray because uh, for about 10 years he played John Quinney on Bell Bird and he was often seen to prop up the bar. And Murray, of course, would never ever drink stunt beer. As he referred to it as stunt beer, it had to be the real thing. And actually John Farnham told me when he was working on Bobby Dazzler, uh, Maury first said to me, he said, uh, uh, son, tell them you don't drink stunt beer, you only drink the real thing. And, uh, and John thought, okay, but it's seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> now they go to... And that, that was Maury. In fact, in 1975, when they had seven price rises in the cost of a beer, he formed the, uh, the Australian Beer Drinkers Protection Society. I don't, <laughs> I don't know whether it's still going, but that was our Maury. He was just wonderful. Uh, on the comical side, of course, he was with Hey Hey for many years with a great Aussie joke, and we loved having him as part of that program. That segment was so popular. And Shane Bourne uh, had a little quote which uh, I thought, from the comedy side of things, said it all. He referred to Maury's role in the uh, comedy area as being the tribal elder and minder of the gag. He kept the great Australian tradition of yarn telling alive. He was truly one of the greats, and I think now I'd just like to, uh, to share with you a few magic moments of someone we loved dearly. Anyhow, the doc says, look, he said, try these little pills. He said, you put one of those into the coffee at night, you'll have a night that you'll never forget. Blokes said, beauty. Got there. 
got the coffee out. He said, hey, love, look over there. She looked over and he's gone into the coffee. She drank it straight into bed. He said to fair, that damn good. He said, I might try one myself. So he's whacked it in, into bed, one o'clock in the morning. She's woke up screaming her head off. She says, I want a man, I want a man. He sat bolt upright in bed and said, Sad do I, sad do I. <laughs> no time, ain't no time to stay. A dozen spoons so shine on, shine on a harvest moon for me and my girl. Shall we dance? Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? I cry the whole night long. I'll do the cooking, Bailey. I'll pay the rent. I know I've done you wrong. The fellow that rang the, the fire brigade, and he said, quick, he said, my house is on fire. You better get round here. The fellow said, well, how do we get there? He said, don't you drive them big red trucks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I can do, Sergeant Mann? You're, uh... uh... Will Perry, farm out past Greenslades. No, nothing, thanks. It's... Well, the missus thought I, you know, ought to come in and have a word with Bert. I'll, I'll duck back later. Strange, Mr. Hunter, and you can quote me. Ever deal with anything more expensive makes, Mr. Day? No, Mr. Hunter, as I see it, I'm helping to curb the road top. Look, son, I'm uh, sorry if I jumped on you just now. I've had a hard yeah, day. A bit worried about the daughter. It's first grandson, see? And... Well, she's a frail little thing. That's okay, Sergeant. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later, fellas. You've led me a few dances over the years, my girl. But I wouldn't have missed one of them. <laughs> and to accept the Hall of Fame Waggy, please welcome Val July. Yes, I miss him for being a part of his incredible life. I have to thank the entire nation. He loved you all. As a performer, it seemed that Murray could do absolutely anything with the greatest of ease. I remember a young actor asking his advice on uh, how to deliver a particular line. He said, well, I'll tell you, son. You plant your feet on the ground, look them in the eye, and tell them the truth. <laughs> he was wise, funny, and kind. Something he really understood was respect. He gave it to everybody. This Hall of Fame tribute must surely be the greatest mark of respect for him. And I'd like to think that right now, he is somewhere on that stage up in the sky, taking a bow, smiling and proud, and saying to you all, very humbly, thank you. And from me, I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> 